Hey, Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV in my studio in Manhattan, trying out the new Fujifilm EF60 flash and EFW1 wireless trigger. So I'm a fan of small flash. So when I saw this coming down the line, I was like, let me take a crack at that. Uh, right out of the box, let's take a look at some of the specs. So we have a guide number of 60, which is pretty good power for a speed like this size running off of AA batteries. It's also got a zoom head from 24 millimeters to 100 millimeters. And in that zoom head, you have a wide angle adapter built in as well as a bounce card. As far as wireless goes, we have eight groups and eight channels, which is a great amount of options for you if you're working in busy environments. If other people have strobes similar to this, you can jump out of those uh, channels pretty easily. And eight groups, that means that under one channel, I can have eight different strobes completely separated power-wise. And this little guy has high-speed sync and TTL packed in there. TTL is what I use primarily today, a little bit of manual, but mostly TTL. The reason behind that, I'm in a daylight studio and I really wanted to use the EVF to take care of the ambient light setting so I'm not shooting into a dark background by canceling out all the light. I wanted to work with it and have the flash be a fill light. So to try this thing out, I had to call up one of my faves, Erica, once we got her in here. I wanted to try this right on camera. Instead of taking off camera and shaping, I wanted to see what I could do with it right in the shoe, see if we can soften out the light by doing a bunch of bounce techniques. So like I mentioned before, I used the EVF to really take a look at the ambient light settings, how much I wanted the windows to blow out, how much I wanted them to be subdued, and then I used basically aperture priority to control the strobe with TTL. So while I'm picking my aperture, the TTL is telling the flash what power up or down to compensate to keep me at exposure while I'm using the EV dial plus or minus to dial in how much of the ambient light I want to take into effect of the final frame. So after bouncing off the wall and the ceiling, trying to get it to look a little bit more natural, not so much an on-camera flash that's like boom, right in her face, I got a really good look out of it, but then I did a real quick cheat code and pulled the sheer curtain in front of the strobe between her and the light. That way I got a little bit more of a soft box effect right on the fly, real easy, and I kind of like it. So after using the ambient light and mixing all together and getting some nice fill, I really want to create a dramatic effect by taking this off camera using the EFW1 wireless trigger. Now that it's off camera, I can really shape the light how I want instead of being on axis with the lens all the time. This is great. So I can actually take the ambient light and crunch it down, meaning I can create an exposure where the ambient light doesn't affect my shot so much, and then I'm using the flash itself to create a more dramatic light source. I put it onto a nice travel light stand, really light, small, and I want to see what I could do with another modifier that's really light and small. So I used the Halo Compact from Last of Light, which is a two-stop diffuser. It gave me a three-foot light source, and I was able to mold the light however I want based on hand-holding that diffuser disc. If you notice, the background gets darker because we cancel out the light, and all we're capturing is the fall-off from the flash that I'm using. Now, if I wanted to, I can bring that back up on the back wall by slowing down my shutter. The X-T4 I was using had in-body stabilization, so slowing the shutter down wasn't too much of an issue as far as shake goes, but it brought up the ambient light just enough to break up that background and still mix in just a touch with the dramatic light source I was already creating. The X-T4 is great and all, but one of my favorite cameras of all time is this X100V, which is a rangefinder style camera from Fujifilm with a 23 millimeter wider lens, right? So I have this balcony outside and I can see all the buildings in New York and everything in the background. Why not use that and have a fill flash come with me? So I got this tiny flash, I got my travel stand, and now I wanted to change up the light modifier with a Lasto Light tri-fold umbrella. Folds down real nice and tight, but gives me another three foot light source on a stand, I don't have to hand hold it, and uh, I would not recommend this for a windy scenario. A, a very lightweight stand and an umbrella, you're asking for trouble, but we lucked out here today. Once I got her on the balcony and I could see the buildings getting that nice soft out of focus look, the fill light shaping her, and the ambient light still giving me a background and not canceling out, I was able to do the same thing I did inside the studio with the EVF. The EVF showed me what my ambient light was. So I used my EV dial to plus or minus to give me the dial in look that I want of the background. And then I just adjusted my aperture to fit with the TTL on at all time so that the power can fluctuate while I'm changing my aperture, which wasn't very much. I kept it pretty wide open between F4 and F2 and the shutter speed fluctuated according to the exposure that I was setting it out with the EV dial. 
I want to thank Fujifilm for letting me take a crack at this new flash, the EF60, and their EFW1 wireless trigger. I want to thank Eric for coming through on one of those humid days ever here in New York. And uh, thank you guys for watching. So hit me with a comment down below if you have any questions me about my experience using this system or what I did in general in the shots. I'll be happy to answer them down below. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and the bell in case you want to get notified when more videos like this come out. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Later.